What's going on guys, it's the Draft Nerd, and today I'm bringing you guys a way too early mock draft, and with the season technically starting tonight, this will be the last mock draft before we get actual NFL action. Now it is the Hall of Fame game, so probably no starters are going to play, but it's still football, so without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, coming in at number one, we got the Carolina Panthers picking number one yet again, and I'm not ready to give up on Bryce Young yet, especially with this quarterback class. No one's really shining yet. And so we're going to look to shore up that defense, which really got demolished last offseason. The Panthers really focused on building up that offense for Bryce Young, bringing in, you know, the two guards, bringing in Deontay Johnson, drafting Xavier Leggett, uh, drafting Jonathan Brooks. Like, they really try to make their offense thrive for Bryce Young, which I think is the right thing to do. But with that, they lost guys like Brian Burns, their, maybe their best defenders, between him and Derek Brown. They lost... Frankie Louvu, Jeremy Chin, you know, they lost a lot of key players on defense. So trying to replenish that this offseason would probably be ideal. So I think it's really between getting a true lockdown corner in Will Johnson, maybe going with a super high upside edge rusher in James Pierce. Overall, I think we're going to try to replace Bryant Burns here and get a guy like James Pierce Jr., who's you know, an athletic freak who hasn't really put it all together yet, but if he does, he has potential to be a Von Miller-esque player. You know, a guy that's super athletic and can, you know, just create havoc on the defensive side. All right, coming in at number two, we got the New England Patriots, and, you know, this is an interesting spot as well. They got their quarterback of the future last draft in Drake May. Now, I can see them going wide receiver here and getting a true number one style receiver in a Luther Burden, maybe a Tetero McMillan. I could also see them going left tackle or just tackle in general. I know they took Caden Wallace last year, but, you know, is that going to stop you from taking a premier, you know, tackle talent? Probably not. You could go Will Campbell or even a Kelvin Banks Jr. Or you could go on that defensive side and look to pair up, you know, a young a young defensive back alongside Christian Gonzalez and go with the Will Johnson. Or you could go with the Nick Scourton and try to replace um, Matthew Judon, who's not looking like he's coming back. But I overall decided to go with Will Johnson here. Just shorten up that secondary. Him and Christian Gonzalez would be a scary, scary young duo. So that's what we ended up doing there. All right, moving on to number three, we got the Denver Broncos. And... Same thing, they could look to get a, another receiver and a Luther Burden to Terrell McMillan. Uh, we still don't know if Corlin Sun is going to be back, or at least back long term. You could also look to go with offensive tackle. Garrett Bowles is getting up there in age. And you could go with a guy like Will Camp or Kelvin Banks. And I think that's what we're going to look to do is go offensive tackle here. Now, I think it's very, very close on who the best left tackle is. And that's between Will Campbell and Kelvin Banks Jr. I'm slightly more in favor of Kelvin Banks Jr. I think he's got a little bit more size and length than a guy like Will Campbell does. At least length, not necessarily size. But arm length, I think, is a little bit better on Kelvin Banks. And I think that slightly edges him out to be tackle one in this class as of right now. Moving on to number four, we got the Tennessee Titans. And, you know, they've really done a good job at shoring up that offensive line that was terrible last season. They got Peter Skronsky a couple years ago. They went and got J.C. Latham this draft, this past draft. You know, they signed Lloyd Cushenberry, the center um, formerly from the Denver Broncos. But I still think they could go offensive line again. Now, I know this would be very annoying for Titans fans having to see their team take offensive line three years in a row. But if they want to shore up the offensive line and really make sure that the offensive line is really, really good for, you know, years to come, I think they could look to go Will Campbell. Now, I know J.C. Latham is planning on moving over to the left side, left tackle to be exact, but I don't necessarily know how that's going to go. I like J.C. Latham a lot more at right tackle. So we're going to go with uh, Will Campbell. And, you know, if he plays right tackle, if he plays left tackle, it doesn't matter. I think he could do both, but he's overall just a really good offensive line prospect. Moving on here to number five, we got the New York Giants, my favorite team. And... As much as I don't want to admit it, we are probably going to be in need of a quarterback. Now, like I said, this quarterback class isn't anything special as of right now. That could change, you know, in a year's time. But as of right now, as a Giants fan, 
I would probably like my team to draft Carson Beck. And I know that's a, you know, a boring prospect to go in the top five, but I think he has the upside to be a Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins-esque player. Now, his floor could also be like a Kenny Pickett, but I think he's got the highest floor of any of these quarterbacks. And, ah, oh man, it's it's tough to take Carson Beck here, but I think it's got to be quarterback. And if it's going to be quarterback, I'd want it to be Carson Beck in the top five. And we're not doing any trades either, or else maybe, you know, maybe the Giants would trade down there. But moving on to number six, we got the Washington Commanders. And the popular pick here is to go with Travis Hunter, uh, presumably to play cornerback alongside Emmanuel Forbes. But that would be a very, very small secondary. Both those guys would be, you know, not great in run defense and would get absolutely bullied by bigger receivers like A.J. Brown. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to try to build up that defensive line. Uh, they, you know, they got a really good interior defensive lineman in Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen. They just drafted Jerzon Newton. But that edge rotation isn't anything fancy at all. I mean, they got K.J. Henry, who I guess could be a serviceable starter for him. But besides that, they don't really have much. So when I get that big, bruising defensive, defensive lineman in Nick Scourton, who is going to do a really good job at setting the edge and can almost act as a, I guess, fourth uh, defensive tackle just because of his size. I believe he's what, let's look at it. Yeah, he's 280. So a bigger defensive lineman who can set the edge and he can also get after the quarterback as well. All right, moving on to the Arizona Cardinals here at seven. And their secondary is looking a little bit thin. You know, I was a big fan of Garrett Williams coming out, but you know, he didn't really have a rookie season. And overall, he's just, you know, he's not what you want as a starter, maybe as a third cornerback on a team. But, you know, being a starter and being that second quarterback alongside Sean Murphy Bunting, it's not, you know, that appealing. And with that being said, we have two really good cornerback prospects in Travis Hunter and Benjamin Morrison. Now, I like Travis Hunter more as a receiver than a cornerback. So we're going to avoid him for right now. And we're going to go after Benjamin Morrison, someone who I think could be a lockdown cornerback for years to come. You know, similar to a guy like Will Johnson. And moving on to number eight, we got the Minnesota Vikings. And, you know, you could look to replace quarterback here since the tragedy of Kyrie Jackson. But, you know, the two best cornerbacks went off the board. You could go drive as Hunter here. But, you know, like I said, I think he's more of a receiver. So we're going to look to go defensive line here. You know, you lost to Neil Hunter in free agency last year. So, or this past offseason. So why not try to get a player that's actually kind of similar I know they technically play two different uh positions but you know size wise they're probably you know not far apart yeah probably about a 20 pound weight difference but we're gonna go with Mason Graham I think he's one of the best defensive tackle prospects we've seen in a while you know he's on that same tier as a Jalen Carter for me I think he's really good at you know shutting off blocks and getting into the backfield so getting that at number eight I think is a pretty good steal if you want even more draft content and my full 2025 draft guide, my Patreon is the perfect thing for you. You'll get access to all of my player rankings which are updated daily, plus you'll get to see my full summer eval on players, advanced stats on players, and my draft grades on them as well. Not to mention weekly mock drafts and mock draft reactions. It's the best way to support me and the channel, not to mention it's only $5. Again, only $5. You can't even get a Big Mac for that price anymore. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or the pin link in the comments and join the family over there on patreon now back to the video all right coming in at number nine we got the raiders and you know they picked up gardner Minshew in the offseason i don't think he's you know their long-term answer at the quarterback position i also don't think the aiden o'connell experiment worked out so i don't see them going back to that well and that leaves them with having to go quarterback in the draft now they could go with Connor Wigman, who I'm a pretty big fan of. We just haven't seen him in much action because he was injured last season. Shadur Sanders is a very popular pick. Quinn Ewers and... Do they not have Jalen Milrow on here? Wow. Okay. That's interesting. But either way, I think we're going to go with Shadur Sanders. Now, he's got all the mental intangibles to be a really good quarterback in the NFL. He just doesn't have the flashy athletic traits like, you know, super strong arm or, 
or the ability to beat you with his legs. He's not going to do any of that. He's going to beat you with his mind, his anticipation, and, you know, being on time and on target. And, you know, just being a thrower of the football, being that field general. That's what Shader Sanders is. Moving on to number 10, we got the Seattle Seahawks, and they're in a similar boat. Geno Smith, although he had a late resurgence to his career, he's not anything special, and he's also up there in age in his uh, early to mid-30s, so this could also be a quarterback pick as well. Now, I actually really like Jalen Milrow as a fit here. It would be a, you know, it'd be really early for Jalen Milrow. It'd be a big projection, but PFF doesn't even have him on their board. So instead of Jalen Milrow, which would be a consideration here, we're going to go with Quinn Ewers. Again, another big projection here. I don't think Quinn Ewers is even close to being worth a number 10 pick right now, but He's got, you know, insane arm talent. If he puts it all together upstairs mentally and he's able to read defenses and make throws on time and on target, I think he could be a really good quarterback prospect. Moving on to number 11, we got the New Orleans Saints. And, you know, they could look to go receiver here. I mean, they have Chris Olave, who's that number one receiver. Rashid Shahid's more of that deep threat. And, you know, looking at the receivers, uh, we haven't taken one yet. So every receiver's still on the board. And,. You know, a lot of people would say, Luther Burden is the guy here. What I'm going to argue is that Luther Burden is very similar to Chris Olave in what they will be asked to do in that offense. Tete Roy McMillan is that perfect fit, in my opinion. Like I said, you know, Chris Olave is that short to intermediate separator. Rashid Shahi is that deep threat. And Tete Roy McMillan would be that red zone threat and that contested catch bully type of receiver. I think the fit's perfect. Now, do I think Tete Roy McMillan is the best receiver in the class? Probably not. That was so good at Luther Burden. But I just think that fit is too perfect not to go with Tete Roy McMillan there at 11. Now, moving on to number 12, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, this could also be a receiver pick as well. You know, I know they have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. People really like Trey Palmer. But Mike Evans is up there in age. I know he's Mr. Consistent and... All of that and you know Chris Godwin I'm pretty sure his contracts coming up here soon so they could be in need of a of a receiver and with Luther Burden still on the board here at 12 that should not happen Luther Burden is definitely a top 10 talent so with the you know just going BPA alone Luther Burden has to be the pick here in my opinion so we're gonna go with him at number 12 moving on to 13 here we have the Indianapolis Colts and I think this could be a bit of a Maybe an unpopular pick just because it's a little early, but I think Colston Loveland fits so perfect with the Colts. I was a big advocate for the Colts going Brock Bowers in last year's draft. That didn't end up happening, obviously, but I just think getting Anthony Richardson a really good receiving threat at that time and position is really, really good. Just because you want to get him as many targets as possible because, you know, he's getting a lot of hype this season, but... You know, he's not the most accurate guy in the world. He's not the best processor in the world. But, you know, just filling that offense with really good receiving threats, I think that's, you know, the best thing you can do with Anthony Richardson. And that course offense will be absolutely scary. Moving on to 14, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think this is where Travis Hunter could go. Now, I know I said that I like him more of a, more of a receiver. And he could play receiver for Pittsburgh. You know, they have who Roman Wilson, George Pickens. I think Travis Hunter could fit in pretty nicely alongside that offense. But they also need a cornerback as well. You know, they got Joey Porter Jr. from last year, or I guess two drafts ago now. But, you know, they got him who's that long, lanky cornerback who's really good. But they need to pair him up with someone. And I think Travis Hunter could be that guy. Um, I think this is one of the few teams where he could play either position, whether that's you know, cornerback or receiver, I think he would fit in nicely either way with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Moving on to number 15, we got the Los Angeles Rams. And, you know, this is a bit of an interesting team. They really dedicated their draft to building up that uh, defensive line with getting guys like Jared Verse and Jared Verse's teammate and Braden Fisk. So, I think they did a really good job at filling that hole. They also got Kobe Turner and Byron Young on the defensive line as well. So, you know, you could look to go secondary here. Uh, we took the top three cornerbacks off the board already, though, so is there another one worth taking here at 15? 
I mean, Denzel Burke and Takario Davis, I think they're first round players. Are they necessarily top 15 players? I'm not too sure about that one. So we could look to your offensive line here as well. Uh, the top two went off the board already, but Emery Jones is a really good guard slash tackle option. I think he could play both at a pretty high level. So we're going to go with Emery Jones here from LSU at pick number 15 to the Rams. Now moving on to here at 16, we still got a really good player here and a guy named Dion Walker, the defensive tackle out of Kentucky. Now he's that big, you know, meaty guy in the middle, but he's also got really good pass rush upside and really good athleticism for his size as well. You know, the problem with him that I have is that he gets a little too high in his stance and he sacrifices a lot of natural leverage that he all, he already doesn't have much being, I believe he's what, like 6'6". Six, six? Yeah, he's 6'6", 348, so an absolute monster on that defensive line, but he sacrifices a lot of leverage. But either way, I think he's a really good defensive tackle with really good pass rush upside, and if he really figures out that pass rush moveset, I think he could be a Dexter Lawrence-esque player. Now, that's really high praise for Dean Walker, but I'm a really big fan of him as well. Moving on here to number 17, we got the Cleveland Browns, and they got a really good secondary, at least cornerbacks-wise, with Denzel Ward, Greg Newsom, and Martin Emerson. But their safeties are, you know, not the best with Grant Delpit and Juan Thornhill, or Jawan Thornhill. So, you know, we could look to go with a really good safety prospect in Malachi Starks. I mean, PFF has him ranked as their number three prospect. I don't think he's that good. But, you know, this middle of the first round area, I think is a perfect spot for Malachi Starks. And bringing him onto Cleveland, that's becoming a no-fly zone there in Cleveland with three really good quarterbacks and then a really good safety as well. Man, that, it'd be tough to throw on Cleveland if this is the case. Moving on to 18, we got the Chicago Bears. And, you know, they have one good edge rusher in Montez Sweat. But they don't really have that second guy yet. And with guys like Michael Williams, who's a really, really good project. Abdul Carter, who I think is going to be really good at that edge rusher spot this season. He played off-ball linebacker last year. Uh, you know, Ashton Jalote, really good player as well. But I think the third edge rusher, right? We're on the third that's off the board. Uh, yeah. I think the third best guy and the best guy still on the board right now is Princely Umamulin. He's got a really good first step. He's really athletic. And I think he could be that perfect, you know, balance to what Montez Sweat is, which is a really good run stuffing edge rusher who can also get after the quarterback as well. Don't get me wrong. But I think those two paired up would be a really, really scary sight to see. Moving on to 19, we got the Chargers, and I know they just took Junior Colston last year for the linebacker out of Michigan, but there's another really good linebacker who's also a quasi kind of edge rusher, uh, definitely a smaller edge rusher, but Harold Perkins, he's really good at pass coverage, and he's also really good at rushing the passer. You know, Junior Colston is, is that tree stump at linebacker who's going to defend the run, and then Harold Perkins could be that pass rusher slash pass coverage guy. I think that would be a really fun duo to see there in Los Angeles. Moving on to number 20, we got the Houston Texans. And I'm going to look to shore up that offensive line. Get, uh, get CJ Stroud a little bit more protection. And a guy like Tyler Booker is probably the best interior guy in this class. I think he could slot in pretty well at left guard there at Houston. Especially if Kenyon Green doesn't have you know a great season this coming season. Moving on to 21, we got the New York Jets, and, you know, you could look to good quarterback here. Aaron Rodgers is definitely up there in age and isn't going to play forever, but I do think he's going to play past this coming season, so we're not going to look to upset Aaron Rodgers, and instead we're going to look to try to get him some talent. You know, they brought in Mike Williams, who is an injury-prone receiver who I don't necessarily think is going to work out in New York. So, pairing, so getting Garrett Wilson another, you know, running mate, I think Emeka Ibuka, Garrett Wilson, and Malachi Corley could be a really fun uh, receiver trio there in New York. Moving on to 22, we got the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, they took Braylon Trace last year in last year's draft, who I was a really big fan of. But do I think he's going to be a full-time, you know, edge rusher for him? Probably not. He might be a more of a designated pass rush only type of guy. And getting a really high upside guy in Michael Williams, I think he could be a full-time edge rusher for Atlanta. It could be a cornerstone for that defense for years to come. 
Moving on to 23, we got the Miami Dolphins. And I think they still need some offensive line help. And with a guy like Jonas Savanyeya, who is a offensive tackle, could move into guard. Either way, I think he'd be a really good fit with that Miami offensive line. You could also look to go Blake Miller here, who seems like a little bit more of a Miami Dolphins type of guy, just because he's a little bit smaller and athletic. I'm just not that big of a fan of Blake Miller. So we're going to go with Jonas Savanyeya. Moving on to 24, we got the Green Bay Packers. And this is always an interesting team to pick for just because they're pretty set everywhere. But I'm going to end up going offensive line here. And we're going to go with, not interior, we're going to go with offensive tackle. And we are going to go with, I think we're going to go with Josh Simmons. I think he's not getting as much love as he should be right now. Um, I'm really between Josh Simmons and uh, Josh Connerly. But I, I'm starting to like Josh Simmons a little bit more here. Moving on to 25, we got the Dallas Cowboys. And I think this could be a running back spot here. You know, there were a lot of rumors that Jerry Jones was falling in love with Jonathan Brooks last year out of Texas. The Panthers ended up taking him before the Cowboys could get to him. So I think that the Cowboys are going to be, you know, looking heavily into the running back position here. And with, you know, four or even five, really, five really good running back prospects here, I think Quinchon Judkins fits the Cowboys you know, mantra the best, you know, he's kind of just that all around running back who holds on to the football as opposed to Ashton GNT who had five fumbles last year. So I think the Cowboys would more likely lean towards Quinchon Judkins there. Moving on to 26, we got the Philadelphia Eagles and we know Howie Roseman for the most part goes offensive line or defensive line. You know, switched it up a little bit last year and went cornerback uh, back to back. Don't necessarily think that's going to happen much. So we're going to look to go defensive line here. You know, they they downgraded, regardless of what Philly fans like to tell you, they downgraded getting rid of Hassan Reddick, bringing in Bryce Huff, who I think is a really good edge rusher. He's good at getting after the quarterback, but he's not really going to be able to stop the run like you would like. And then Nolan Smith is also a pretty small edge rusher who, you know, is still unproven. He was a first-round pick, but he didn't get much time last year. So, you know, he's still a bit of an unknown. So why not get another really athletic, really good uh, edge rusher and Abdul Carter? Moving on to 27, we got the Lions. And and we know that the Lions love running the ball. And, you know, their interior of their offensive line is getting a little bit shaky. And getting a guy like Jaden Roberts, who is an absolute monster, who is just the strongest guy you'll probably ever see. Uh, I think he's the exact fit that the Lions would, uh, you know, want to get. Moving on to 28, we got the Cincinnati Bengals, and, you know, this could be a quarterback spot. You know, DJ Turner didn't have the best season last year. I do think he could bounce back, but it doesn't help, but it doesn't hurt to get, you know, more secondary help. And we're going to go with Sicario Davis, who plays cornerback, and I think he could play cornerback in the NFL, but he could also play safety. He's got really good size and length at 6'4", so, you know, just kind of like a Swiss Army knife there for the Bengals. Moving on to 29, we got the Buffalo Bills. Same thing. They got rid of Trey White, who, you know, wasn't really, you know, the same player that he used to be. But, you know, they, they whiffed on Kyer Elam. And so, really, they, they need to get a, you know, a really good bookend cornerback. And I think that could be Denzel Burke. He's a really smart, instinctual player, and I think the Bills would fall in love with him. Moving on to 30, we got the Baltimore Ravens. And... You know, Derrick Henry, I think he's going to have a really good season for Baltimore, but he's up there in age, and he's going to he's gonna fall off eventually. I just don't know when that's going to be. But getting ahead of that eight ball would be really ideal for the uh, Ravens, and I think they could go with a running back here and go with an Ashton Ginty, who's you know similar to Quinshawn Judkins, a really all-around good running back. He just has ball security problems, which I think he could fix. Moving on to 31, we got the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm going to look to pair Trevarius Ward with a running mate. And that's going to be Jabbar Muhammad. Jabbar Muhammad just seems like a 49er. I don't really know how to explain it, but he's a really good, a little bit of an undersized option at cornerback. I believe he's like 5'10". Uh, yeah, they don't even have his measurements, but I'm pretty sure he's 5'10". Moving on to 32, we got the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're going to end this out with a bit of a wild pick. 
And I believe I did this last year on a lot of my way too early mock drafts. But we're gonna try to look to get that cap, uh, that Travis Kelsey replacement. And you know, I believe in my first way too early mock draft of 2025, I went Mitchell Evans here. I don't necessarily think he's a Chiefs type of tight end, but someone who is a Chiefs type of tight end is Oscar Delp. Now, filling Travis Kelsey's shoes is impossible, but I think Oscar Delp has a really good chance of being a productive tight end for the Chiefs. So we're going to go with Oscar Delp there out of Georgia. And then that's going to do it. Let me know what you guys think of this draft. Again, it's still really early, so a lot's going to change. But, you know, this is still kind of just getting familiar with some of the prospects. Uh, so, you know, let me know what you guys think. And with that being said, I'm the Draft Nerd, and thanks for watching.